This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 227, recorded on August 13th, 2015. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find you in your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. And of course, we post the show with world class show notes each week out at the Average Guy. TV. And I really encourage you to go out. We've, I've been spending a lot more time in those show notes. So you want to head out there and take a peek. Actually, if you're listening to them on your phone, just hit that, hit the icon where you're listening to it. It'll flip over and the show notes will be right there. You don't even have to come out to the average guy.tv. They'll be right there in the show notes. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, of course, you can contact the show. Just send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. You can track me down on Twitter at jcollison. And now, I shouldn't say it now, we've been doing this forever, but you can call in. And tonight, we got a bunch of folks who have, potentially will win a LastPass premium. Uh, for a year, and you can call those in 402. You can still do it during the show, by the way. I'll let you do that tonight. If you want to, 402-478-8450. If you're live and you've got a question, just pick up the phone and call it, and then we'll take it live. I mean, we won't. We'll, it'll go into my voicemail, and then we'll listen to it. But that's we will do that on the show tonight. So if you want to call that in, 402-478-8450. Theaverageguy.tv, of course, is powered by Maple Grove Partners Web Hosting. Get secure, reliable High speed, hope, uh, high speed hosting, there we go, from people you know. That is Christian, and uh, he's got a few spots left on his servers. If you want to get in for as little as 10 bucks a month, check out maplegrovepartners.com. And I want to say thanks. A couple of you, many of you, have actually gone over and signed up after I said this. It's an amazing thing. And so Christian's like, hey, I got a few new customers. So if you came off the, uh, the podcast and you signed up over at Maple Grove Partners, Thanks for supporting Christian. He's doing a great job of uh, setting those servers up. So we'll thank you for doing that. We want to thank Roger over at WLMN Radio for broadcasting us live at WLMNRadio.com. And he streams us out there daily in Grafton, West Virginia. Home Gadget Geeks is a part of the Geeks Network. Find the links to this show and many other great podcasts out at thegeeksnetwork.com. You can join us in chat, watch or listen live on YouTube and in Spreaker. Mixler down at the navigation right below. Find all the navigation you'll need. The new and improved average guy. TV. All right, we got a fun show tonight. It's always good to have Amber back, and uh, Amber comes in here about twice a year. We always have to reminisce about how long it's been since we've had Amber on the show, but Amber, thanks for coming on tonight. Great having you. Yeah, Jim, Mike, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, it's great to be back. It's it's great to be a, a regular and catch up on, on all the latest news. No, it's great that you are a regular. Thanks. It's hard sometimes to get companies to be regular on things like this, and you always say yes, and so we say thanks. We'll, uh, we'll hold you for a second. We've got a call. Before we do that, of course, Mike Weger hangs out with me each and every week. He's Though I think he's taking a sneak peek at a football game tonight. Mike, <laughs> what's going on that's so important with a preseason game? Oh, just a little bit. Uh, my cousin actually was undrafted, but he actually got picked up by the Dolphins. He went to a camp. Uh, they said, come on down for a tryout, and they said, we like you. They signed him. He was the only one to make it through that tryout. So now he's uh, on the team, and he's on the 90-man team, so now he's trying to make it onto that 53-man roster. So he's playing right now. He plays for the Dolphins, and so he was actually out there for the opening kickoff on special teams, and I've, I've been sneaking a peek trying to see because he's a tight end. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit distracted tonight, but I'll, That's right. I'm here. I'm good. That's right. We, we brought Amber in here to kind of cover for you. Hopefully by the time we're done with last pass, the game will be the game will be done. Oh, we're fine. Let's podcast fine. first. Podcast first. <laughs> Whatever. All <laughs> right. We, I always tell you guys, uh, if you call in, I'll play those on the show, and we've been trying to get those up front so you can listen to them. So we're going to put LastPass on hold for just a second, and Amber agreed to that, so she's okay with it. But, Mike, we got a call in from one of our listeners who uh, listened to the last pa- or the, uh, the Bitcoin interview we did about three weeks ago with Edward uh, Weininger and uh, had some interesting things to say about his Bitcoin experience. So let's listen to David. Hey, Jim, this is David. I'm one of your listeners, and uh, I listened to the Bitcoin show a couple weeks ago, and I had a a quick anecdote about Bitcoin. I bought some Bitcoin the first time I heard about it when it was covered on uh, an NPR story in 2011, and I bought uh, 1.6 Bitcoins for about 25 bucks, and I sold them near the top 
uh, and I would have made uh, $1,200, but I sold them on Mount Gox, which uh, went bankrupt, and I lost all the money that I could have made. So the way I'm thinking about it is that I lost $25, not 1200 Which is the right way to think, by the way. So, so nice job, David. But I'm part of the class action lawsuit uh, for the bankruptcy, so there's a chance that I might see something out of it uh, in the future. But the problem was that year that it went um, bankrupt, I had to claim $1,200 of income because I sold the Bitcoin, even though I never received the, uh, the proceeds from that sale. So then when they finally went bankrupt, I was able to claim a loss for the whole amount. But it's uh, an interesting story. And um, the, uh, the fact that Bitcoin is treated as an investment, every time you buy a burrito with it, you have to... Uh, calculate the cost basis of the coins that you sold to buy uh, anything. So it makes it less convenient than a real currency in the eyes of uh, the taxes for uh, for keeping track of, of your, your uh, gains and losses. So if you want to get... Okay, we'll, we'll wrap that there uh, as he gave me his contact information. So David, thanks for, uh, for calling in. Mike, uh, some interesting things in that. Amber, I'm going to ask you this question too. Some interesting things with Bitcoin on that realizing as we were having that conversation that is not treated as ordinary income uh, from a from a tax perspective it's an investment income which means every time you sell it you know if you've ever had the joy of selling an investment you got to do all these calculations for the IRS of how much you paid for it how much you sold it for and his 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 comment about buying a burrito well that's not the you know when you're filling out your taxes it's not like sold for a burrito you know it, i mean that's what you kind of have to do but any thoughts, Mike, as, as we listen to that uh, that voicemail? Well, no, I had no idea about the whole like burrito thing. But besides that, uh, just happens to be that I was reading through my syllabus for federal income tax for this semester. So it just reminded me of, I'm sure, I, now I'm going to bring this up. It'll be probably my first day question. My, uh, you know, you get your smarty pants ticket by asking a question that the professor might not know. But mm. now I want to bring up Bitcoin because I had no idea that he would have to take that, you know, as a claim 1200. And then with the whole bankruptcy thing and how that all works, just extremely interesting. I, I want to hear back from him when this whole thing, right, you know, wraps up and hear how it all ends up with uh, the class action lawsuit and stuff like that. Yeah, that might be interesting to have him on. Amber, have you messed with Bitcoin at all uh, in in your travels? Uh, did you have you tried it yet? I have not. No. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. We haven't either. I mean, to be honest with you, I never done it. And I met Edward at a conference here in Omaha, and he started talking about Bitcoin. I was fascinated by it. I still haven't bought it now. Interestingly enough, the night we did the show, Bitcoin was at about two hundred and seventy-four dollars a share, or a you know a, a coin, I guess is what they're going to say. By Saturday, it had gone up to two hundred ninety-five dollars uh, a, a coin, and we joked. Edward and I were going back and forth that just Home Gadget Geeks has that kind of power to push the price of Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I'm sure it wasn't, but uh, uh, David, thanks for calling in. And uh, you guys can do that, you know, each and every week, 402-478-8450. That number's out on the side if you want to check it out. It goes right into my voicemail. If you're listening live tonight, Amber has agreed to take some some calls. We're going to let it go. No, we're not going to take you where you're on live on the air. Call that number, and it'll go into the voicemail, and then we'll play those. And uh, we'll do that throughout the show. But, Amber, we want to catch up with you a little bit. It's been since January since we saw you last. Uh, some things have gone on at LastPass. Can you talk a little bit about... What's new, the, you know, kind of the stuff, the exciting stuff that's going on at LastPass? Sure. Well, uh, you know, a, a lot has happened since January. Actually, uh, you know, when you reached out for me to be on the show again, I kind of went back and was going through all of our recent, you know, feature releases and product announcements, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's been a good year. We actually released a redesigned app for both iOS and Android. Uh, A little more similar in design than they were before. Sorry, we just lost you for a second. That's okay. Oh, Re that's okay. Redesign Android, iPhone, and then we lost you. So yeah. Okay. We. Uh, I'm sorry about that. We no, redesigned no, no. Uh, both the iOS and the Android app, and uh, now they look and feel pretty similar. You know, we kind of want to make the cross-platform experience, uh, you know, a little, a little more similar, uh, but at the same time, you know, maintaining kind of the unique aspects of each platform as well. Um, so that's great. You know, it's, it's uh, very much 
uh, simplified navigation. We kind of focused on adding some of the the new design standards, uh, you know, that come from Material Design. So, you know, if you use our Android app, you probably saw the quick add button. Um, just kind of incorporating some new design conventions that we've seen on those platforms. Um, so, if you haven't tried our mobile apps in a while, I you know highly recommend giving them another try. Um, and I guess that kind of segues into our most recent big news which is that LastPass actually changed our model uh, and it's it's the first time we've done that uh, and really the the big change now is that instead of having to pay for mobile uh, you know before it was part of our premium so you could try the apps for two weeks and then you know you would be uh, asked to upgrade to premium and uh, to enjoy that mobile sync as part of the premium service. Well now you can download the app, sign up, get started and just use the app for free. No trial required, no premium upgrade required. Uh, so the great thing is you know if if you're kind of a mobile only user or if, if that's where you decide you kinda need help and you wanna start you know saving all your passwords and documenting uh, you know things in secure notes uh, from your phone it's it's gonna be free and then you can use it across your phones for free um, same with the tablet you know you can get started on your tablet for free if that's where you choose to um, you know start using our password manager but of course same as always the desktop uh, access is free as well so if, if you get started from a, a desktop or a laptop computer and you know you sign up and and that's where you start managing your passwords free as well so the great thing is you know more people can try LastPass more people can enjoy the benefits of a password manager and they can do it from the device that they uh, you know that they prefer without having to upgrade right away and then if you want to sync across all those types of platforms then that's where the premium upgrade now comes in for twelve dollars a year so yeah. really, oh, go ahead Mike well, I was going to say, when I saw that news drop uh, two days ago, I was like, I wonder if Jim had a little bit of a, <laughs> you know, an inkling that something was going to happen, because that's a highly convenient, Jim, that you get her on no, today totally. when, that when was it breaks two days ago. Not planned at all. We've, no, and awesome. and I have had this interview planned for months. Yes, I, uh, when we scheduled it, Jim, I was actually hopeful that this release would have gone out by the time we were chatting. So we, we got it in just in the nick of time. <laughs> like, no, I'm going to be on Jim's show. You have to finish it. Stay late. I'll bring pizza. <laughs> deal. Well, yeah. um, so let me make sure, let me clarify for the average guy on this thing. Mm -hmm. right? So really there's a, there's a web platform. So Mac, PC, you know, Windows. There's the mobile platform, Android and iPhone. If I start on the iPhone or Android, I can start for free, and as long as I as I stay using the usage there on on the mobile platform, mm -hmm. free to me. Or I can start on the PC side, where a lot of people started. Right, that's mm -hmm. that's a lot of people start there, and that's going to be free. When I want to combine the two, which is really good, it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup when you have <laughs> both working together, right? And but when you combine the, the when you combine the two, that's the twelve dollars. I had right twelve dollars a year is still mm -hmm. the, the annual fee, which is just so cheap. I mean, it's it's to me that's a no-brainer, right? When you think about, I'm just as a user, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to mess around because I tried doing the free thing for a while, and then mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, this is dumb. I want it on my phone, and I'm using my phone more and more, mm -hmm. um, and I'm still using my PC, so it's a great, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a great convenience. I had a user ask me though, oh no. Is you know because we talk about in the podcasting world we talk all the time about free services going away you know that's mm -hmm. the biggest cause of corporate failure it's free services right because <laughs> you got to pay the bills when you guys looked at this from a cost model standpoint I mean this this isn't this isn't breaking the back right I mean you, this is going to be fine you guys thought through this we just had some users a little concerned are we giving away the store on this thing. Yeah, no, we don't really see it that way. I mean, when our team made this decision, it was more that the world has changed since when LastPass launched. Uh, you know, when, when LastPass launched in 2008, 2009, iPhones were just on the market for about a year. So if you really think about the trajectory of technology in that time period, so I guess, you know, the last seven or so years, the the you know relationship of people to different devices has changed a lot so there are people who might just be on their tablet or on their smartphone all day long and they might not 
use a laptop very much or a desktop. You know, just just the way that we work and the way that we use our technology has changed a lot. So what we were focused on was just making LastPass more accessible to more people based on their use of their technology. And you know, our analysis of the market was just that there's this huge mobile force and we want to be there with our solution um, to help them manage their passwords. I mean passwords are a very real problem for people these days and you know it just seems like every year you're doubling the number of passwords that you have for apps and services and you know things to help you with work and things to help you at home and things to help you with your kids and I mean it's just endless. Um, so yeah it just for us it was about priorities it was about making our app accessible to more people. No, I think that's a great idea, by the way. I I like it from the sense that it really does. We've got this whole generation that's mo going to be mobile only in a lot of ways. I mean, they're using their PCs at work. We've got to call the to the caller. Uh, it's going to talk a little bit about the corporate piece, so let's hold off on that one for a mm -hmm. second. But we do have a lot who, who are doing it between work and home, so to speak, but they're doing a lot of things on their mobile device. I am new to iPhones since the last time we talked, and I have really enjoyed the new redesigned app on the iPhone with, you know, so now it's so convenient to set that password one time, and then anytime I need something from it, just, you know, just hold my thumb on it or hold my finger on it, and it lets me in. That, man, we got to get that on the PC, because <laughs> I am so sick of typing in, it's, and it's the right thing to do, but I just get a little tired of typing my password. I have a really long, complicated LastPass password, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I want to get a password for something else, or I've got to find it, you know, to integrate it in with something. Not everything is integrated yet, and so I still struggle a little bit with it from time, from time to time, but... It, um, Amber, one of the things I also added, and we talk about this every time, every time you're on, I, I inch my security up just a little bit more. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, I mean, last time I added du dual, you know, uh, dual factor on uh, all the other accounts, but I hadn't done it on my LastPass account. Hmm. This summer I added it to my LastPass. So I'm using Google Authenticator to then do that. And I thought that was going to be actually a huge pain. Turns out not as bad as I, as I thought it was. How are you seeing a move? I mean, certainly you guys probably see some numbers on dual factor. Are you seeing a, a growth in dual factor uh, usage among your users? For sure. I, we've definitely seen an uptick in not only interest in the feature, but also just usage of the feature. You know, I think that's in part due to how many breaches have been in the news in the last few years and just general awareness of you know cybersecurity best practices uh, but I think it's also a testament to the fact that two-factor is getting a lot easier to use there's a lot of choice you can use it with your smartphone there's a lot of options based on the platforms that you want to use it's it's more usable than it's ever been and I think that there's a lot of great companies that are continuing to improve the user experience I mean you know that's the thing with security Security. It's it's all well and good if you offer it, but until it's really usable for the average person, um, you know they're not going to adopt it. So I, I think what we're just seeing is that the technology is has really improved, and and yeah, there's a lot of really great options on the market. LastPass supports about uh, actually over a dozen two-factor authentication options, and you know so for our users, we kind of offer a huge range just based on, like I said, the platforms that you use, the devices that you use, and, and kind of your personal workflow. So on that usability, I was wondering, did the whole talk of kind of the, maybe the new model, was that at all geared around when iOS 8 came out and all of a sudden you guys can actually be the password manager for like Safari and things like that? Did that have an effect on you guys? Because, I mean, talk about usability. That was huge for me. I used LastPass on the phone before that came out. And it was, it was you know, it was kind of wonky. You had to open the LastPass app and use the browser instead of being able to use it more naturally like you can now with iOS 8. Did that have an effect on you guys at all? Yeah, I guess just to back up and, and let users know who might not be familiar. So with iOS 8, uh, Safari supported extensions with their new update. So that was a really big deal for LastPass because before, iOS was a pretty closed platform and there was no way for us to see into Safari or see into other apps and, and you know, fill data. Uh, that, was, that was kind of the, the, 
the obstacle that we had. Well, with the extensions, uh, like Mike, like you said, we were able to add an extension for LastPass that is supported in Safari. And that, it, it is, I mean, not to be cliche, but it is a game changer because it means that we can be right there, fill data right as you're browsing in the browser of your choice, and you don't have to interrupt your, your workflow. Um, and the same, actually, there's a, the same extension for Chrome on iOS. Um, so, you know, regardless of what your preferred browser is, it just means a lot less work for you. So, yeah, it was, it was really great to see uh, Apple make that move and, and to see that they'll support that. And I think it hopefully bodes well for the direction of the platform as well. And, and hopefully we'll continue to see, you know, good options for third party uh, services like ours. Oh yeah, when I was watching the keynote, the first thing I thought of was LastPass. I'm like, that, I guarantee LastPass is going to jump on that. It's going to be way easier to use. Because uh, I had kind of gone away from it on mobile. I used it on my desktop still, but on mobile, I would kind of gone to the Apple keychain sort of stuff just because it was, you know, usable. It was easy. Mm -hmm. So, And now I came right back. It was awesome. <laughs> That's great. No, that's great to hear. You know, I, I've been an Android user, uh, so for Android, we had an app fill feature on Android a lot sooner than we were able to get it on iOS just because of the, you know, the, the platform itself. So, yeah, it was, it was great that we were able to make that leap and, and, and offer it for our users. We've, we've definitely seen that it's, it's been a great addition to LastPass. Not that we just want to talk about iOS 8, but uh, there's some Windows stuff to talk about too. John Zadler called in. Let me play this because we'll talk a little bit about the Edge browser as well. Here's John Zadler. Hi, I'm wondering, uh, my name is John. I'm uh, not a Windows 10 is out. Is, uh, does LastPass have any uh, Windows 10 integration? Or is there any kind of metro tiles or uh, metro apps that are out with LastPass? And is there any uh, integration? Bye-bye. John was calling from Canada, so it's a long way to come. That's why it's blipping. I'm just kidding. Um, Amber, talk a little bit about, because we have issues now, you know, the Edge browser does not have very good extension support yet. And it's not that it's not good. It's just not well documented yet. Where are you guys at with Edge and Windows 10? Yeah, so... You know, I, I think, uh, well, there's a couple different answers to his question, actually. To clarify, you can use LastPass on Windows 10. Uh, you know, you can, if you're running any of the other browsers, so Firefox, Chrome, Opera, you can still install our extension, uh, even Internet Explorer. Uh, you can install our extension in any of those browsers and continue to use it as you would have, you know, before on any of your other devices. With Edge browser, yeah, there's not really true extension support yet. So what that means is there's no way for LastPass to hook into the browser. There's no way for us to really be installed. Um, and we're kind of waiting on Microsoft to make that change and to add that feature to their browser. I've heard rumors that it may be coming sometime this fall. I don't know how true those rumors are, but really, you know, for us at LastPass, we're just kind of waiting until you know, the better integration is there, and then we definitely plan to support it as soon as it is available. Um, you know, I, I think there was there was talk of them using an extension engine that's similar to Chrome. Again, I'm just going based off what yeah. I've read in the yeah. news. Um, so, you know, we'll, it, it kind of remains to be seen. I, I hope that the timeline is, is not too too far in the future. And then he mentioned Metro, uh, Metro apps. Mm -hmm. LastPass does have a Metro app as well. So if you run your machine in Metro mode, this is also true for Windows 8. If you run your machine in Metro mode, you can download a LastPass app from the App Store. Um, it's, it's not quite as integrated with the platform because the Metro apps can't see into any of the browsers. So my personal recommendation is to run your browser and install the extension there. That's really the best LastPass experience. But you can also install the Metro app, and that's a quick way to get to your data, too, if you want to. Yeah, I think the, the best LastPass experience on Windows is in Chrome <laughs> with, the, with the extension installed. It's, just, it's, it's pretty flawless. Now, I, I say that I'm not a Firefox user, so I'm sure... There are some Fire, Firefox folks who would say, no, the, the extensions work great in Firefox as well. Um, I've used IE off and on, and I imagine that's an okay experience as well. So uh, install those plugins. If you're new to LastPass and you're in the browser, um, it's going to ask you, the first time you log in, it's going to say, hey, our experience is really better in, with this, these extensions installed. And so just install those extensions, and it really is a great in, uh, integration on the, on the Chrome browser. I don't even think about passwords anymore. In fact, I get frustrated when LastPass logs itself out for whatever reason, and I gotta log back in again because I'm so used to those passwords just being passed forward uh, and get those done. Now, since the last time we talked, I 
have opened a whole bunch of new accounts and I save everyone, but I use a similar password and it reminds me still. So when we think about security features, any changes or anything you guys have made, you know, we run a security audit or you can run a security audit, mm -hmm. audit off your account. You guys change that at all? Same experience. Yeah, the security challenge is a really great feature. Uh, once you've gotten, you know, once you've added some of your sites to your LastPass vault, you can run this security challenge. And, and like Jim said, it's it's an audit of everything that's in your vault, and it tells you if you've got weak passwords. It actually tells you if you've got compromised passwords. Uh, so uh, we flag websites that we know had. Uh, breaches and advise you to change those passwords. We also tell you if any of your passwords are old. Uh, so yeah, we, we updated the security challenge a couple months ago and the other great feature with the security challenge is we incorporated auto password change. So for those of you who may have been longtime LastPass users, you may remember that last year we launched a new feature called out auto password change and essentially it's a one-click password change feature. Uh, so like let's say uh, you haven't updated your Yahoo password in a while and you want LastPass to do it for you. So with auto password change, you would literally just bring up your Yahoo account in LastPass, click change my password, and LastPass will go do it for you. It'll open a new tab. It'll go through the whole password change process. It'll create a new strong one. It'll save the changes, and then it's done. So you just clicked one button, and LastPass did the rest. The awesome thing is now it's built into the security challenge. So as you do your audit, you can see, oh, here's all the passwords LastPass tells me I really should change, and here's all the ones that it can change for me in one go. So it's really removing a lot of the homework that you as a user have to do just to keep your password strong and uh, <clears throat> and to deal with, you know, password breaches and all of that. See, and those are the features that I really like, helping out people like, you know, my grandparents or my parents or any of any of my friends, those are the features that it helped anything to make it easy for them. That's what I kind of like about LastPass is that it's been able to make it super easy, first of all, to remember passwords. And then just like all the features you talked about, those are just the extra things that really help them out. So for almost like newbies or people who are just kind of trying to stay safe, but don't really know how, I think it's a really good solution. So I love seeing those because they help out the tech guys that are helping other people out. And you know, you guys are really helping us out there. I love that. Amber, you had uh, when we talked about this because you had a limited number of sites available in the spring when we talked about this. Are you continuing to add sites for that auto update feature uh, coming online? As far as are there more sites available today than there were the last time we talked? Yeah, there are more today than there were. Um, I, I I actually don't know the exact number as of today. When we launched it, it was about 75. I think now it's closer to 100. Although I'd have to double check. Yeah, the the trouble is. Um, you know, the way the feature is built, we have to look at how each website handles a password change. So, you know, it does take time to add more websites to the feature, but we have added many of the most popular ones. So people will find that many of the sites they do have stored in their vaults, they can use auto password change for them. No, very cool. We talked a few minutes ago about uh, integration with the enterprise. Paul Brarin had called in with a question about that. Let's uh, let's play that. Hello, Amber. I've enjoyed listening to your previous appearances on Home Gadget Geeks, and I have two questions for you tonight. I work for a giant corporation that now allows LastPass on corporate-owned Windows laptops, but with over a thousand sites I now have remembered, can you comment on whether there might be a possibility? that the performance of the LastPass extension in 64-bit Chrome could be improved a bit in the future? Second question. At IBM, where I work, we're becoming the largest Apple shop around. Are you able to comment about what might be coming in the future, either related to this fall's iOS 9 release or new iOS LastPass app features? Thank you. This is Paul Brerin from Tinkertry. We, we joked. <laughs> we, we listened to this in the pre-show, and Paul sounded a little mechanical at the end there. So, Paul, we thought maybe you were Watson. You were trying to be Watson. <laughs> for a second. But, Amber, so two questions. Uh, let's see, see if you can remember the first. Yeah, so uh, he was talking about integration with Chrome, and I'm really impressed. He's got over a thousand sites saved in his LastPass vault. Although, for those of you who are 
you know, your eyes are popping because of that number. That is not the first time I've heard of someone having a thousand sites. So it's actually not that uncommon. Actually, the funny thing about LastPass is people quickly rack up more sites than they think they have. You know, when you say to someone, you really should start using a password manager. It's awesome. You know, you don't have to remember passwords. And they're like, oh, but I only have like five or ten. And then they start using it and then they realize, oh my gosh, I have 70 passwords. Where did these all come from? So anyway, um, but it's great that they're allowing him to use it within his workplace. That's, that's awesome. Um, but for performance in Chrome, yes, I can say that we, we are aware. So what happens with LastPass is there's a lot of encryption and decryption hap happening locally in the extension when you're using your data. So when you have a thousand sites, you can imagine there's a lot of data being encrypted and decrypted at any given moment in time based on what you're trying to do with the service. Um, so I can say that yes, there are some performance improvements coming. Yes, we're aware that when you reach a pretty high number of sites, there is a little bit of what some, pe some people would call a lag with the extension. Um, so you know, hopefully with uh, some upcoming releases, you will begin to see some of those improvements. Um, otherwise, I encourage you to get in touch with me if you continue, you know, continue to see any problems and, and have any questions about it, but uh, good news there. And then the second question was about iOS and, uh, you know, some of the upcoming releases. I can't say anything specific about iOS 9 and what we might be able to do with that. Um, we do have an Apple Watch app now, so I don't know if you've checked that out, if you have an Apple Watch device. Um, and obviously we were talking a little bit earlier about our iOS redesign, and so we're really excited about that. Uh, we do have, obviously, we always have more coming around the corner. So I do encourage you to keep an eye out, um, and I think across the board uh, we'll be seeing some great things, um, you know, in, in, the, in the future. Well, he said a thousand. I only have two hundred ninety-three, so I'm feeling a little like Mike. Do, did you look up while he was yeah, mentioning? Now that? I had to. Yeah, you, now I should you look up at the number you had. And, <laughs> and I add them all the time. I mean, I just we had another service. I somebody sent me an email today about uh, you know a new service that's out there, and and it, immediately it goes up to the save. You know, it comes up. Hey, do you want to save your password? Yeah, I want to save it. So that goes in there, especially um, and what I need to do, and you, you encourage me every time we have this, I have to have you on because I don't like do maintenance on my LastPass stuff until I've talked to you and then I feel bad and then the weekend afterwards I go clean everything else up. But it is a good way. I'll pick a kind of a standard password and then I'll run that security thing, go back and change them and you know go back and, and, and rerun them. It's just a convenience thing. At first, I don't want to put a long password in or even a really secure one in at first because I might be going back to the site a couple times to do some things. You know, you got to validate this and stuff. And then I'll go change it after I feel like, okay, I'm going to be here for a while. Let me go back and change it. That's for me. If I forget about that, the beauty is I can always run that security audit and go back and, and, uh, and finish those. So Mike, what do you got? Where do I see account? I'm in my vault. I don't see oh, account. So um, open your LastPass extension in the browser toolbar and click the tools menu. All and right. then you should see a security check, security challenge option in the menu there. Security challenge, awesome. And then if you run that. Show my score. Yeah, run through that and it'll be in a tab down below. Oh, shoot, what's my master password? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> we got it. Hey, while, you're figuring, while you're figuring that out, Oliver is, uh, is on the line as well. He left a message, so let's... Uh, let me uh, let me play his message. Here we go. It's Oliver. Hi, Jim. Oliver Banta here. I'm a longtime 1Password user on the Mac and iPhone. I originally went with it due to the integration with the Apple ecosystem and having the data store under my own control. But I'm not all that happy with how it works on Windows. Uh, but I'm not quite sold on leaving 1Password yet. Can you help explain the key differences between 1Password and LastPass and why someone like me would possibly want to move to LastPass if we already have a similar solution. Uh, thanks for any advice, Mike. And I think that would Jim go for Oliver. oops. I think that would go for key key pass. I think is the other the other one as well. When we think about that, what differentiates you guys from from those services? Yeah, there's there's a couple different ways to look at the differences. So I'll try to hit on a couple of them. You know, for some people, price is a differentiator. Um, 
one password's pricing model is a little bit different than ours. They have sort of a, a license, and you can do a license for a device or for several devices. Um, KeePass is free, but they are an open source project. And LastPass is free, uh, and then we talked, of course, about the $12 per year premium upgrade. And premium is required on LastPass to do cross-device sync if you want to sync from desktop to smartphone to tablet. Otherwise, you can use any device category for free. If you know if you get started on desktop, you can use your desktops for free. If you get smart started on smartphones, you can use smartphones for free. If you get started on tablets, you can use tablets for free. So that, just to get that out of the way, that's kind of the difference in the pricing model. Um, but the other difference that people always talk about is actually how uh, the service works, our architecture. So one password is a local option that you store your vault locally and then to sync it you go through a service like Dropbox. Um, and so, you know, some people prefer that model. LastPass, we are a local only model, so it's, it's still local only encryption and decryption, but syncing to LastPass in the cloud um, to then access your data across devices. And uh, with KeePass, they are in a uh, local-only solution as well. So just so you know, for example, with KeePass or 1Password, if you wanted to get your data on a different machine, you would have to set up sync manually, and you would have to make sure that you're manually syncing your data from device to device. Whereas with LastPass, there's no work on your part when it comes to syncing. It's built into the service, and it's built into our security model. So we don't know your master password. Everything's decrypted locally and encrypted locally before it leaves your device, but we do all of that hard work of automatically syncing, keeping everything up to date, backing it all up automatically. Um, you know, there's an offline copy of your data and an online copy. So that kind of is a little bit about the architecture differences and, and how the service works. Uh, Feature-wise, LastPass is really focused on browser integration. So I would say that our strong point is we have, you know, great extensions for every major browser on every platform. It's very consistent across every platform and we are always there right there in the browser to help you as you're logging in, as you're signing up for new sites, as you're checking out and you need to fill out your payment information, if you're registering for something. All those touch points where you need to securely enter your passwords or securely save data, LastPass is there. That's, that's really what we do very, very well. And then we have a whole host of features built around managing your online life and managing your online security. So we have a lot of great additional features like two-factor authentication, which we talked about earlier. LastPass supports over 12 options, so you can choose the one you want to use. That provides another layer of protection for your LastPass account. We um, have a secure notes feature, so you can really save any type of data that you want in LastPass, not just passwords. Uh, for example, I have Every single Wi-Fi password I've ever used is stored in LastPass, so I always have it if I need it. Um, I've got backup copies of all of my credit cards, so if I'm on the road and something happens, I can look them up and I won't be out of luck. Um, you know, I've got backups of all my travel documents, just things like that. Um, and, you know, we were talking about the security audit, you know, another great feature to really make it easy for you to manage your online life. Um, so yeah, that, I, that definitely is not a, you know, a full explanation of all of our features, but I think that's kind of a highlight of, of what LastPass does well and, and what kind of our advantages are. Yeah, no, that's a good explanation. Mike, do you have a number for me? 33. <laughs> Dude. I know. Dude. That's about it. That means Total. there's some that aren't in there. <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. I kind of have my system and I kind of just keep track of it in my head, but it, but I guess I, I thought uh, I had them all in there. I think yeah. I have the main ones, my mainly like daily drivers. Those 33, I'm probably visiting all of those each day. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing there's some extra ones that I have not put in there. So. Yeah, you know, what's what's funny to me is is the tricky passwords, the ones that you only use once a year. So, you know, if you pay your taxes online and you only need that password in April, I mean, you know, if, if you don't have it written down somewhere or stored in LastPass, then, yeah, stuck with a That's password. Yeah, I didn't think about those kind of passwords. Usually I don't save those, but those would probably be the ones you want to save. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always forget about the secure notes. I need to use that feature because it does sync across all devices. And so it's a great place to put those. And, you know, even like 
I need to know my mom's password, right? And that's just a perfect one when I create it, go into Secure Notes, put it in there, save it, boom, mom's password. So I got it. So I can go back and and uh, play because I'm not I'm not gonna put I think LastPass my mom if I put one more thing on her computer she just lose her <laughs> mind. So it's just pretty easy to get her. You know she checks email and plays solitaire. Good to go. You know, <laughs> at that point. And I put my uh, passport numbers in there too. Mm-hmm. When I traveled abroad, I figured you know at least I could log in somewhere and log into my account and have my passport numbers in case I lose those. So yeah, things like that. Yeah, I, I do the same, but you know, I actually another thing I did was I recorded all of the emergency contact information in there as well. So if I lose my passport, who do I have to call or who do I have to start contacting in order to fix it? Or my credit cards. I have all of my credit card contact numbers in there. Um, you know, so basically what I did one day was I sat down and I took everything out of my wallet and I made a digital copy of it in LastPass because if something were to ever happen to those documents, you know, it would be a pain to have to go through replacing them and figuring out who to talk to and all of that stuff. Um, And actually LastPass supports, you know, attachments so you can attach documents to secure notes as well. So, you know, if you wanted to take a photo of any of those documents, if you wanted to, um, you know, attach important things to any of your secure notes, you can do that as well. And it's encrypted just like everything else. Yeah. Well, I'm getting uh, input from everywhere tonight. This is pretty cool. We use talk.to as kind of a customer service little tab on our website at theaverageguy.tv. Folks, could anytime, anytime that's on. By the way, if you're a regular listener and you're over at theaverageguy.tv and you see a green tab, bottom right-hand corner, and it says that I'm, li- I'm online, I'm online. Start a, start a chat with me. It's a great way. It's one-to-one chat using talk, T-A-W-K dot T-O. New service I've been trying out. And uh, and actually, the CEO caught me the other night online, the CEO of Talk.to, and I thought, what a great engagement uh, method to to get, you know, hey, this, hey, I'm the CEO of Talk.to. How are you liking it? And all of a sudden, you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. Anyways, Justin had asked me over there. He says, is there a difference between the LastPass extension when it runs in 32-bit versus 64-bit Chrome? I'm running 64-bit in Windows 10, and the 32-bit Chrome seems to be faster and smoother than 64-bit. Does this go back to Paul's question? Um, at all? I that's interesting. I think it really just depends on what version of the browser you're or operating system that you're running. I've I've personally never heard of a difference in performance. Um, you know, if, if you have a 64-bit browser running, I would recommend using our 64-bit installer um, to really get the best performance. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mike, is that you? <laughs> what? <laughs> so someone left me a note. He said, that co-host of yours, he needs to go. He's way too Apple. Was that you? Did you do that to oh, yourself? No. That, oh, no. Somebody, oh, you're man. Apple, man. Hey, all we've talked about is Apple. Oh, that, that was me. Yeah, that, that was, was me. You. I thought it was. Yeah. I, I thought it was you. That's pretty funny. Um, let's play one more. Ken had dropped a message. Uh, let me find it here. I'm glad can... you you're that open with me. You just tell me if someone said that. That's I would tell you. We have trust. I would, I would tell you that because I would tell that person to just sorry, <laughs> go listen to something else. That's exactly what I'd say. I'd be like, I, hey, you don't have to listen to this. So, okay. Let's uh, let's throw Ken in the mix. And the good thing about Google uh, voicemail is you get a little transcription. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Ken. I was wondering about LastPass and wearable technology. Are you able to use wearables like the Apple or Pebble Watch for authentication? And if not, is that something LastPass is looking into? Thanks. Love the show. Bye. I, I'm you know I'm not gonna lie. This is a lot of fun taking all these questions this way. This is we don't. We don't normally do it this way, but Amber, this is kind of fine. So wearables, Amber, Amber what do you think? Uh, so we do have an Apple Watch app, and it obviously integrates with our iOS app. So if you have those devices, you should definitely check it out. It's free to download, and it uh, you know you can look up your passwords. You can look up your secure, secure notes. Uh, there's actually voice search through the Apple Watch app. Uh, so it's pretty convenient if you need to look up something on the go. And um, Pebble Watch, I think, was the other one that yes. he mentioned, yeah. which we don't currently have support for, but uh, is something that I know our mobile team has also been looking at. Oh, cool. Mike, you just got a Pebble Watch, right? And so that would, would you, would you think about maybe trying to do some stuff on your watch? 
yeah, when he said Pebble, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, actually, I, I got it, and I already broke it, so I had to get a replacement. <laughs> so they're shipping me a free replacement. Uh, it's not as waterproof as they claim. Let me just oh. say that. <laughs> oh, I heard you but and yeah. Colin talking about that on open mic night. And so you were down at the lake, and you're like, well, we're just going to try it. It's covered under warranty. And so apparently it didn't work. Huh? Yeah, I was in the water for about 20 seconds, hopped off a paddleboard, climbed up on the boat, and the screen is – dead. So uh, that, that's where I, yeah, it didn't go too well. But actually customer service was really nice. They had me take a video of it, take some pictures to prove I own it, and they've got a new one already on the way. So not too bad there. But yeah, using LastPass on the watch would kind of be interesting. I don't know how I would use it too often. It, okay, so what's your use case on the Apple Watch? Like what's kind of, what do you see people using it with? Uh, well, something I could see was, let's say you had an upgrade to your PlayStation and you needed to log back into Netflix. So you could just, if you had it on your watch, you could just call it up and then read the password out and someone could type it into your TV console for you. Okay. Um, you know, so there's, there's cases where maybe you're out and about, but you aren't on a computer and you just need to, you know, enter a password onto another device or another console. Um, that's definitely one. Or like, let's say you have friends visiting and they're like, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? You could just look it up in your secure note real quick uh, and help them connect. Uh, or so if, you're at the do if you're at the doctor's office, you know, and, and they're like, hey, um, you know, can you double check? Well, I guess you probably would physically hand them your insurance card. Um, but maybe you need to look up your insurance number r real quick. You know, so just things like that. Information on the go, you know. Yeah. Does that use the same technology then that, like, their Apple Pay does where once it – until the watch comes off your wrist, uh, you're kind of logged in and it stays secure because it knows it's with you? Or do you have to do some other sort of uh, authentication to get into it? So it's authenticated through the iOS app. So as long as the okay. iOS app is uh, – my understanding – uh, which I probably should double check, but my understanding is you authenticate on the iOS app, and when you're authenticated there, you're authenticated on the iOS app as well. That would make sense. Awesome. Oh, very cool. Uh, we got a few more minutes for questions. If you want to throw them in chat or if you want to uh, call those in, 402-478-8450. You guys have done a nice job of calling in tonight. So if you're a regular listener to Home Gadget Geeks, I'd like to do more of this, guys, that are listening. So you, tonight is how I've always wanted it to work. So great job uh, filling that in. Amber, when we think about looking forward with, with LastPass, anything that you guys want to kind of let the audience know that is coming or do you want to promote or those kinds of things? And, you know, I don't give away the good stuff. But <laughs> anything that you can tell us? Well, there's always good stuff. Uh, so checked out LastPass. If, if you haven't tried a password manager yet, you know, there's never been a better time. So I hope you give it a go, especially with our model change. Uh, you know, try it on the device of your choice and and save a couple passwords and, and see, you know, if it really does start to improve your online life. Um, we do have some exciting things in the works. So, you know, I'll, I'll be excited to share those with our community, um, you know, over the next several months. And, um, you know, we'll just, there's a lot of, uh, you know, upcoming releases as well. We mentioned iOS 9, you know, remains to be seen what's going to come with Windows 10. So, you know, I think there's a lot going on and there's, there's a lot that we could potentially do with our service, um, just depending on, on how that goes. Ah, very cool. Well, Amber, thanks again for always coming on here. We'll, I'm sure there'll be a few LastPass t-shirts at the Home Server Show meetup. So if you're yes. planning on being at the meetup, I will have some LastPass t-shirts for you guys uh, that, that you come in. We'll, we'll give those away um, as well. I've got uh, three codes we'll be giving away. Um, I keep getting calls through talk.to. Maybe I should turn that part off. I have not silenced the ringer on that thing, and I don't know if you guys can hear it through my earbuds, but it's a really loud phone. It's like an old school telephone ringing in there, and uh, i gotta, I got to figure out how to shut that off. Um, so uh, we've got three codes we're going to give away to listeners, so as you are, uh, I've got the names. I'll contact you guys directly who called in, and we'll pass those premium codes along. To, not everybody will need them because uh, some of you guys, I know some of you guys are already password. There are you already LastPass users in that. Amber, it's good to catch up. It's good to uh, it's good to hear things going on. Oh, Drashna had said real quick. He said we talk about the breach. So Christian and I actually talked about the breach on Cyber Frontiers 23. So if you want to go back to that, we kind of chose uh, early on we wouldn't uh, spend some time on that because Christian and I talked about actually more Christian than me. Uh, on Cyber Frontiers 23. So if you want to go back and listen to that, you can. 
Amber, I know you guys have covered this extensively on your web or on your blog, right? So if you go to it's a blogs.lastpass.com. Yeah, blog.lastpass.com. Yes, there's a there's a post there, and I think it has a lot of great information. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions after that, you know, please uh, get in touch with Jim, who can field them to me, and I'll be happy to to do what I can. Yeah, no, there's a lot of great information out there. I know for me. Uh, I immediately changed my master password, and it actually it, it encouraged me to get that two-factor put on my master password. And I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I put Google Authenticator on there, and I thought that was going to be kind of messy. You mentioned how how many different ways are there now to do dual-factor on your master password? I think we're up to 14 or 15 uh, partners that we work with. So basically that just means there's a lot of different types of apps that you can choose to use with two-factor. So, you know, Google Authenticator is a really great one. Um, Duo Security is another one. Um, YubiKey and, is, is, yep. is one as well. Yeah, Yubico's YubiKey is a great – that's actually – it's a premium multi-factor option with LastPass, uh, but that is another one that we highly recommend. Yeah, I'll, I'll recommend straight out the Google Authenticator on that. That just works great for me. It gives you about 30 seconds, and then it changes the thing. It always seems like I open that thing up with 10 seconds left, <laughs> so I just wait for it to cycle through. Uh, the other tip I've done is then, of course, on any PCs in the house that I control that I'm not necessarily worried about anybody else getting on, you can, there's a check mark to say trust this PC and you can write the name of it in there and then it won't do that again, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, but surprisingly, there's been some, uh, like my work computers, where I needed to get in and get a, get a password out of it. I don't, uh, I don't necessarily install it on my computers at work and so I'll go, but I'll go in on the website and pull that password out, copy and paste it in. And, um, and so uh, it makes it super easy. It's like, oh, I got okay, to authenticate, pull my phone out, open up the Google app, numbers are there, type it in. Not terrible and super secure that way. I mean, that was just that was one of those instances you guys recommended change your master password. And so immediately I went out. We talked about that as a community. It wasn't more than an hour, and we kind of were discussing because we're all big LastPass users, right? And so a lot of us were talking about that internally. It encouraged me to change my master password in a way and change it and change it with the dual factor. If you're using LastPass, let me encourage you too to get in there and get put dual factor on it. It's just it's, it helps you sleep at night. Just just like one of those things. It's like if someone were to get my password or to hack in or whatever, they would have to have my phone, and and they're not going to have both. And so get in and get that done. Amber, uh, Mike, and I are going to stay around a little bit and uh, do a little bit of community news. Uh, we will let you go. Thanks for staying late. I will send you some dates. We're gonna we're gonna come down. I'm gonna visit the office and see you guys there in Virginia. But uh, but thanks for coming on and thanks for kind of updating us on all the goodness that is LastPass. I appreciate it. Yeah, and hopefully I can come back in six months and definitely let me know when you're in D.C. Thanks yeah, for having you, me on. You bet. Great having you. We'll let you drop. Thanks. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, how's the game going, Mike? Oh, Tim just had an awesome block. Really? <laughs> now, what well, position yeah. is he Is He's he tight end. Okay. So, yeah. They liked him because he's, he's 6'8", 275. Oh, yeah, he's a big boy. So uh, I saw the picture of you on Facebook with him, and yeah, it's, like, it's and, like this. Yeah, you're. <laughs> I mean, you're not short. You're not tall, but you're no, not short either. I'm not. You're, barely, I'm not even six foot. I'm like five ten, five eleven. Yeah, yeah. And he was just towering. So yeah, it's it's uh it's going well. They're up. They're winning, and uh, he's now in at tight end. So it's kind of fun. It's getting oh, good. Very cool. Very cool. It's hard to believe it's football season already here in the United States. I know. Unbelievable. It's, did you want to – were we going to talk about the Fantasy League too? Oh, yeah, let's do that real quick. So yeah, you're, good, let, good transition. Tell us – yeah, no, right, yeah. We're talking about football. Uh, talk about what you're proposing with the league. Yeah, so um, I proposed out to anyone on the 2980 network, which is open mic night, and we have yet to mention it, but we're going to mention it on Suit and Scrubs. I was thinking it would be kind of fun to just do a Fantasy League with listeners and then the hosts. So it would be Colin and me and Hannah, and uh, Jim uh, mentioned I'm he was in, interested. Yep. And then any of your guys, any of you guys that are listening, uh, the live guys and anyone in the podcast forum, anyone who would want to join, uh, if you want to tweet at us, email us, however you want to get a hold of us and just let us know you want to be in on this fantasy league, uh, we thought it would be kind of fun. So I think the max you can have, I don't know what the max is on ESPN. It might be uh, maybe 12, maybe more. I don't know what the max is. But we could get as many people as we want. Yeah, I think we can figure it out. Maybe even start yeah. two leagues if we get too many. Uh, yeah. If you're listening here, Jay, at Jay Collison on Twitter, uh, you can send it jim at theaverageguy.tv. Mike will give me some instructions and links of how to get signed up in, the, in, in there and such. And 
I thought Mike said this. I'm like, yeah. How come I've never done this before? I've, you know, I do all the fantasy stuff. I'm not a big fantasy football guy, and I don't. One of the things that all the trades that some of these guys get pretty serious right. about this well, stuff. Well, and this that's why I kind of put out to, no. This is, free, this is not to right? be paid. This all is free. not, you know, this is for just fun, kind of bragging rights. I kind of, I when Jim said he was interested, I'm like, this could be like a 2980 versus the average guy sort of thing, and uh, see which which could network be. could win. Could you know? be. Uh, yeah, it could be kind of could fun be. if we did it that way. We'll, so. we'll see how. It, We'll see how it shakes out. So if you're interested in jumping in, send me, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv or Twitter at Jay Collison. Uh, get those in. We'll announce this a couple times because this show won't go out for another week. And yeah, and change. we won't when, draft. When's the deadline? Before, uh, I think we're about three weeks out from okay. from the first game of the season. So we'll draft right before. and uh, I'll start tweeting we'll it, and we'll do some other yeah. stuff. Dude, yeah, we'll tweet it. But we'll and if you're a newbie, you've never done it before. That's fine. My wife has never done fantasy football, but she's excited to have a team. So literally, this is a laid back kind of have fun. Just uh, maybe every week on both of our shows, we can say who's in first. You know, yeah. something like no, that. It'd be kind be of fun. a fun little engaging thing with the community. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. We'll check in, and if we get too many people, we'll just split it. We'll split it in two teams, and we'll still keep track and do, do some. I think that'd be kind of fun. I've never done that on the show, and I think that'll be a nice way to add. And if you're Australian, uh, you'll have to learn American football. So jump Jump in there. A lot of Australian, UK listeners. Glad to have you too. Give it a try. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it'd be fun to just give that a shot. And then, Mike, we would probably need to do some kind of. Do they have fantasy leagues for rugby or cricket? Oh, geez. I hope <laughs> I not. I if they do. <laughs> I wonder if they do. I mean, because, hey, look, if we're going to do a fantasy league, fantasy football league, and expect our global audience to participate, we should try. That's so, true. Oh, I'm down. Rennie or Andrew or one of you guys. I don't know, Rennie, you're still out there. Do do, do they do uh, – you guys do fantasy for, for rugby or for cricket? That's out there. Those would be the two big ones, I would think. Well, I was wondering, have you ever done a uh, a March Madness bracket? Uh, for me? That's oh, yeah. Because that's my favorite. Dude, I, I met with their community. I crushed it last year. I Did won – my son had a bracket, and he invited me in, and I crushed it. Now – it was total luck. <laughs> right. lie. Oh, it, it always right. is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it was total luck. So, all right. That's so, my favorite as well. So. Yeah, let us know. We'll uh, we'll kick that in, Mike. Uh, this this will be Mike's contribution to the network here, as uh, we bring in a little fancy football. It'll be kind of fun to do and uh, to get it done. And uh, let's see, what else? Anything else from a housekeeping standpoint uh, that we need to talk about? I need to bring your Raspberry Pi back from work. I think I. I've been I've been on record as saying I need a Raspberry Pi like I need a hole in the head, but I think I'm gonna actually try it. So I'm, we've Do got it. yours yeah. at work. We didn't mess around with it as much as I thought we would. The interns got busy and it just kind of sat aside. So I'll bring it home, maybe give that a try uh, over the next couple weeks and uh, see what I can come up with. Ken says plus one for match Mar- uh, March Madness. So one quick tech yeah. thing on that Raspberry Pi. So uh, one use case my. Tonight was the first night I've missed having that Raspberry Pi because what I used it for was a VPN, right? And so my dad is in Kansas City, and he's trying to watch his nephew play football, but in Kansas City, they're not picking it up on Fox like they are here in Omaha. And I was like, oh, wait, just log into my VPN and log into the Cox Cox app and watch it via the Cox app. And I'm like, oh, I don't have that VPN. So one nice thing you can always do is just – because the Cox app requires you to be on your home network to use the app to watch live TV. So, but you can trick any device into being thinking it's at home if you just use your VPN. So that was kind of a fun use case that I use it for. I was like, oh sure. man, I kind of missed it. back? No, not at all. No. Sure. Okay. It was literally the first time since you've had it that I even remember. All summer, it. which was all yeah. summer. Sit, yeah. Sitting on that thing. Uh, Rennie says uh, rugby league. So they do oh, have a rugby league. Okay. We should, we should try fantasy football. Uh, um, Brian is predicting that Hannah's going to win the whole thing. She'll probably smoke us all. I wouldn't surprise me. She's got that beginner. Like I told you about Dice Masters, she I kicks know. my butt in that. And it's so. just it's just enough of not knowing something to not get swayed by popular. Right. Yes. That's kind right. of that's kind of how well, that works. Well, and it's easy enough now. Projected points, all the apps do everything for you, but it's it's easy enough for a person who's never right. done it or never follows football. So. Yeah. All right, very cool. We'll get that started going as well. Busy fall schedule for me. Um, you're going to get a lot of actually in the in the next, I don't know, 12 weeks, uh, you're going to get more of the conference stuff that we're doing. I'll be out at the Heartland Developer Conference September 10th and 11th, right before the Home Service Show meetup. In fact, I still have to figure out how I'm going to do that and fly to Indy and be there in time. In fact, if you haven't been following Home Service Show and you're coming out to the meetup, Dave's moved the location. 
we are now in the Microsoft building in Indianapolis, which is going to be sweet. And so the, the, the one drawback is no night before to go in. We're going to have to do go in the morning of to get some things set up. So that'll be a little short. Uh, that'll just mean Friday evening we can do whatever we want uh, from those from that standpoint. So be very cool. If you haven't uh, decided to come out yet, There's I think there's still spots left. I'll have the link to that in the show notes going, and it'd be good to, uh, good to have you out there, Mike. We're sorry you can't come and join us. I know. Me too. Maybe next year. Maybe yeah. next year. Although we, we have been talking about maybe starting an Omaha one and see if we can't do something here in the Midwest. So now that I know you and we, we know a couple of the guys, Eric K. Johnson is here in the in uh, the Omaha area, podcaster here, we could probably, I'm sure we could do a tech meetup here. In Omaha. Either way, this is my last year of school, so hopefully next year I'd be able to go no matter what. So Yeah, no, very cool. The other thing is, other announcement I have for you guys, I'm brokering a little bit of a deal with uh, with Ryan Pendell. He was on, uh, he's the general manager or the general editor, I think, I forget the, the exact title, for Silicon Prairie News. He was on, uh, oh, I don't know six or seven weeks ago we're talking about that we are actually going to do a short little news show every other week on home tech tips we're going to kind of turn that into the silicon prairie news minutes or oh, something like that i like that yeah That's ryan's nice. going to come in and we're going to cover two or three articles that have been uh, the most popular on silicon prairie news uh, during the week he's going to cover them i'll ask a few questions it'll be 15 or 20 minutes no more just kind of quick hitting uh some quick hitting news of what's going on here in silicon prairie or in tech in general uh, you know, uh, they have an award. So Silicon Prairie News has an award that they do every year. Gallup and my program is up for an award, actually, uh, for that. I'll be posting the link to that in the show notes. I should have it ready so the guys in chat could uh, vote for it. But we'd love to see Gallup and my program win that. So there'll be a link in the show notes. This will be the one time you, get, you need to go out to the show notes because I can't tell you what the link is. And vote for that. Uh, vote for us. And so you'll you'll go to the, it's just a Google Doc, go down to the page, I think we're number seven, find Gallup, click it, and then hit submit. You can submit as many as you want, uh, but that's pretty cool. So anyways, we're going to change, uh, Ryan and I are going to try a new Home Tech Tips, watch for it every two weeks. If you were a subscriber to that, it, we kind of, it's just kind of pod faded. And uh, I told Ryan, let's not start a whole new channel, because we've been talking, let's just take over the Home Tech Tips. So that's going to turn into that. So if that subscription is turned off, you might want to turn it back on if you're interested in doing this because I'm sure it has by now. You might be interested. He'll be great for that too. He was fantastic on the show. I really liked having him on. He'll yeah. be great for news. No, he's, no it's a great – It's a, so it'll be fun to kind of tweak this idea of a quick news program. That's not covering the same stuff that everybody else is. Well, I like the idea of short. I mean it's almost like – yeah, I like the 15 to 20 minutes. I think that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's just, again, the, the news stories that Silicon Prairie News covers are not your typical tech. They're very tech-heavy, but they're not, they're they're more like what we do here on Home Gadget Geeks, which is we interview, we don't interview the giant companies, right? We we bring LastPass in here. We bring Mediafire in here. We, you know, we've, we have done a bunch of those. Uh, in the fall, we're kind of going back to listeners. So you're going to see a lot of the guys that have been on before and some that haven't. Uh, join us in here, and we're going to do some community engagement again. Mix it up a little bit, and and it's not that I'm not taking those interviews anymore. I just wanted, I felt like, eh, let's mix it up a little bit, bring some of the listeners back on, and uh, and do some shows. I've been working on John Zadler to get him back. We have not had John on the show in a while. He just pinged me tonight. It would be good to have him back. So appreciate that. Uh, all right. Well, with that, we'll say we're here live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, at theaverageguy.tv slash live. You know I'm live Saturday mornings at Ask the Podcast Coach. You can head over there, 9.30 Central uh, a.m. Central here, 10.30 Eastern, out at Ask the Podcast Coach. Although, this week, live on uh, live on my channel, theaverageguy.tv. Dave's going to be out of town again, and so we're bringing it back over to theaverageguy.tv. So, if you want to join me, my live guys, if you guys want to join us on Saturday morning for that 9.30, and I might be at Gallup. So this could be crazy. We could have Dave at PodCamp in Pittsburgh, and I'll be in the Gallup studios coming in. Mike Dell is going to join us. Uh, he's a podcaster with Podcast Help Desk. He is going to join us uh, from up in Minnesota. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see if we can pull that all off in the way that we do it. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, go and do that, theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter. Just like to have you, so, although I didn't get one done this month either, so I don't know why you would sign up, but do. Eventually I'll get better. This has been amazing. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central 9 Eastern, on here at theaverageguy.tv live. Thanks for listening, and with that we'll say good night, everybody. <laughs>